session. So that is a reading from a concept and reality book compiled by Mons. Venerable Katukurunde Nyananda Mahatero, Concept and Reality in Early Buddhist Thought. So basically we are discussing this book, book for several weeks now and uh, and we were covering certain aspects which uh, Nyananda Tero is now trying to come up with a, a proper definition for Prapancha, what is the conceptual proliferation and we have come to a level uh, where a certain amount of understanding is already given and uh, now, three more aspects of Papancha is introduced. This area, what is called as uh, triple, triple proliferation in thought. So, Tanha, Ditti, and Mana, or Tanha, Mana, Ditti. Tanha is the craving, the mana is the conceit and then the T is the conceiving or the conceit. So these are three areas typically Prapancha can manifest and uh, typically the commentary started narrowing down the Prapancha only to these three areas and they simply say Prapancha is of three types that is Tanha Prapancha, Mana Prapancha and Ditti Prapancha. So likewise they have become most of the important three aspects of the Papancha. But as Nyananda Tero is pointing out, so they are actually three results. Papancha itself is not the Tanha Manaditi, but Papancha is very much like that manifolding, uh, diversification, uh, multiplying, diversifying. So that sort of a attitude, that sort of a potential uh, available in the human mind anyone's mind. So that is the very root of the Vapancha and it is uh, manifested as three forms, more prominent forms. So they are the craving and then conceit and then the uh, ditti, the views, wrong views. So then uh, someone, I think uh, you are ready with reading and probably we can start with where we have stopped. Ah. <clears throat> uh... Yeah, Bante, um, we stopped here. Um, okay. Do you want me to start um, straight from there or do you want me to start from that uh, triple proliferation of, in thought? Start the chapter here. I think uh, we covered that uh, fairly. Okay. Probably we can go straight away to the uh, yeah. today's point. Or yeah, maybe I'll you can rush through, rush through the uh, from the beginning then. Then okay. others can simply listen so that we can get some idea. Yeah, no problems. Right. <clears throat> uh, triple proliferation in thought. In order to locate the deeper psychological mainsprings of Prapancha, we have to turn our attention to Buddha's brief discourse set out above. There it is said that if one does not delight in or assert or cling to that which entails subjection to Papancha Sanya Sankha, one would be re- released from all proclivities towards evil mental states. At, as we have already in, indicated, Yato Nidanam invariably refers to the first part of this formula of sense perception bounded by its correlative Tato Nidanam. What one should need the delight in, no assert, no cling to, is this very process of sense perception which comprehends from the cognitive point of view the totality of the five aggregates themselves. The expressions delighted in, asserting and cling to correspond respectively to tanha, craving, mana, conceit and ditti, weaves, bound up with the notions of I and mine. This marks the intrusion of the ego into the field of sense perception. In fact, From the wordling's point of view, it is no intrusion at all, for the subject-object relationship is regarded by him as of the very essence of cognition. As portrayed by Mahakachayana's formula, the latent illusion of the ego awakens the stage of Vedana, and thereafter the vicious duality is maintained until it is fully crystallized and justified at the conceptual level. Thus, what happens has been a complex, Conditionally, a rising process tends to result into a direct relationship between the ego and the non-ego. 
Now it is an oversimplification of facts characteristic to the realm of language as well as our ways of thought. The label I, thus superimposed on the complex contingent process, serves as a, conv a convenient fiction of thought or a shorthand device. And it is in fact one of the shortest words in many a language. But paradoxically enough, it is the outcome of Papancha, rather a disconcerting predicament. The paradox is resolved by the fact that the ego notion is an extension in thought, not faithful to facts, being a mental aberration of wordling. Here we see a curious distinction between the relative meanings attached to Papancha when it is used with reference to the verbal and mental realms respectively. Such shorthand devices as technical terms or code words in a language help us to avoid verbal papancha, but inasmuch as they are evolved through a complex process of thought activity, activity they may be said presuppose a good deal of mental papancha. Oh, one moment, Saman. So if I just uh, summarize or so highlight a few important things, so as uh, we already discussed in the Madhupindika Sutta, there are three stages into this uh, proliferation process. So whatever the sense experience starts with a very uh, innocent kind of uh, conditioned process. So it's a kind of a natural process. But uh, once it reaches to the level of feelings, so there are we intervene or someone intervene or person intervene or we can say the ego interrupts. That's what, uh, as Katakuru Nitero beautifully mentions here, the once it reaches the Vedana, the feeling, so at such a level, uh, the ego comes to the field, and then the ego interrupting the process has non-ego as well. That's in the outside the ego as well. So the ego, that is I, and there is not I in the outside. So now there's a possibility of comparison. That is the mana. The comparison is possible. And again, when I and the not I is available, then always there's a possibility of possession or I want or desire, tanha, craving. So that is also there. And uh, when I and the external, the not I is there, so I probably want to adhere to what is not I, something outside. So there's a certain amount of adherence and too much uh, theorizing. Uh, thinking, dogmatic views, and that, that sort of things are also there. So ultimately, what we call as the wrong views are also possible. So very much like this uh, whole process, when we as a person interrupts, I, ego interrupts, so then all these three other possibilities are possible, what we call as tanha ditti mana, or tanha mana ditti. Tanha is the craving, mana is the conceit, uh, ditti is the view. So tanha comes as a result of now, as mentioned in the Madhupindika Sutta, Abhinanditabha. So you start uh, getting delighted. You are happy. So since you are happy, you want it. So so Abhinanditabha comes as a result of the tanha, the craving. And then uh, the ditti part, that is where Abhivaditabha, uh, where, so you repeatedly uh, welcoming it, Or you and not you, I and not I. Is there the comparing is there? Comparison, comparison is going on, and as a result of that, the the abhivadi comes to the be, and then the ajjo se a further continuation where someone is now adhering to it. Now he has a certain amount of interest, and uh, then start looking at. And thinking about it, thinking more about it, clinging to it, very much like adherent to it. Now it's very much you have become that. It has come to the level of bhava, the becoming has implemented. Now you are no more in the present moment. Rather you are at a different level you have born. You are in a kind of a view now. So that is how the third part, what we call as the ajjo se tabba. So this Ajose Tabang is the dipti level where our mind is now fairly stereotyped, fairly programmed, fairly conditioned, 
and no way out, something like that. So that's why when it comes to the ditti, it's very difficult for someone to overcome that. Even the Buddha uh, sometimes give up certain people's wrong views to uh, overcome. So that he doesn't even try to do that. Or sometimes even when he's trying, he went through many, uh, say, dip, in a way we can say some sort of a difficult time. Probably you can remember when after Buddha becomes uh, fully enlightened. So basically uh, he was uh, trying to convince three jatilas. And it was pretty difficult. And there are uh, five... 500 jatilas, then 400, 300. So likewise, 1,000 jatilas were there. So they are all Brahmins and all were thinking that they are Arahants. And uh, in order to convince them that they are not the Arahants, and they have sort of uh, went through a wrong belief, so Buddha has to go through a tremendous amount of uh, using various tricks, various psychic, psychic powers even he has to use. Ultimately, only he was able to convince them. It's a very, very difficult task. But there are certain other instances that instances that Buddha was quite easily uh, telling something, uh, maybe uh, showing the Dhamma, preaching some Dhamma, and immediately they understood. Because they haven't gone through a kind of a ditti level, kind of a wrong view level, so that easily their minds could be able to change. But on the other hand, when someone's mind is fixated, Someone minds, someone's mind is uh, fairly uh, conditioned, thoroughly conditioned, going through a fixed view, then it's quite difficult to change. Now, these three areas, so Venerable Jnananda Thero is uh, highlighting there. And, uh, and on the other hand, another interesting part that I, the typically the I, any language has I. So in English, we call I. In Sinhala, we call Mama. And in Pali or maybe Aham. And then the, uh, maybe in Tamil something else. So likewise, every language has this notion of I. So this I is very much like the center. So that is by, with respect to that center, we have all that other, uh, grammatical relationships, all denominations, all different kinds of, uh, grammatical expressions. Center is the I. So Asmimana in such sense is the most uh, subtle root of the Papancha. So that we can discuss in the later, it may be discussed in later chapter, how uh, Buddha explains Asmimana, the I, is the very root cause of the Papancha. So we haven't come to that yet, but we can see the when we recognize as an ego, as an I, as an individual, so with respect to that center, we can create lot many kind of thoughts, many kind of uh, imaginations uh, and comparisons. All things are possible. So that is very much like the root cause of the whole papancha. And uh, that is some, some to some extent he has indicated here itself. And uh, and on the other hand, uh, he, as he pointing out, uh, there are various kinds of uh, language or linguistic uh, representations, maybe words, maybe vowels, maybe grammar and etc. etc. So as he pointing out, it may be used to avoid verbal papancha, but unfortunately it may produce mental papancha. So it may produce certain amount of thinking. So when whenever we are thinking, we are using a language. So you may be thinking in English or you may be thinking in Sinhala or you may be thinking in from another language. So you need a certain amount of thought or other concepts, language to think. So concepts are essential to think. So when concepts are, say, penetrated, then probably you can stop thinking. So the concepts, therefore, is promoting certain amount of thinking. So that's why we can... Uh, see in the future that uh, Jnananda Thero is pointing out there are two sides of the Papancha. One side is very much like a dynamic side and the other side is, side is very much like a static side. So all the concepts 
and the all and all man made products have the potential to produce prapancha and it it tends someone to think it promotes thinking it promotes someone's mind to think and to imagine to proliferate so therefore all these man made products they are creations and uh, they are concepts and all that is prone to prone someone to think so therefore they have that static nature static potential to generate prapancha so that is the static aspect of the prapancha on the other hand our mind has its own inner capa- inner tendency to prapancha to generate prapancha to diversify to multiply things so we can't simply keep things as it is you always want to add something you always want to subtract we always want to divide we always want to multiply you can't simply allow things to pass by suppose that there is a water tunnel a water pipe so whatever intake assume that is completely taken say going out as the outflow that is no change happening within but our minds are not like that so whatever coming in so we do a lot of distortions we do a lot of fabrications we do a lot of additions multiplication diversifications and then we are putting out so that means we interrupt the process so that is where the sankharas are coming to the picture so we do a lot of uh, contributions to whatever the thoughts feelings etc coming in and we don't simply allow them to pass by our mind has this inner tendency to proliferate to fabricate avijja pachya sankhara so the sankhara khand the the formation segregate is defined in that that way but the define it as sankatam abisankharanti ti tasma sankharati uchchati so whatever is condition so mind the sankharas are responsible for further conditioning so you can see the the sankhara khand the responsibility or the influence of sankhara its impact is so significant in the prapancha where whenever a thought comes so we do our own part we we add so many other external com- complications into it and then thought become two thoughts three thoughts five thoughts or distorted thought whatever it is so we do a lot of uh, such kind of fabrications when a feeling comes again we add our own parts and feeling becomes somewhat distorted changed similarly the perception similarly whatever the forms that means forms the sights smells sight sound smells taste tangibles so likewise the sankhara thand formation segregate also plays a pivotal role in this whole process by adding its own uh, uh, what we call as the fabrication process whatever is condition is further conditioned further prepared for further fabricated that is inherently available within us so you can see the sankhara khand the purpose or the function of the sankhara khand and on the other hand as a separate note you can recognize why buddha define nibbana as sabb sankhara samata stilling of all the formations calming down all the formations there he exclaimed telling that my mind has become uh, avoiding so my mind stopped doing this fabrication visankhara gatan chitta tanhanam khaya majjaga so he exclaimed after he become the fully enlightened buddha so he says now my mind has stopped doing the fabrications and my, the 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 complete stilling of the formations is called the nibbana so you can see the kind of a relationship here the prapancha the sankhara khand and on the other hand the nibbana so we need to understand in that sense so if we somehow getting closer to nibbana means we have to minimize prapancha we have to relax prapancha we have to calm down prapancha we have to shorten prapancha as much as possible we have to recognize how proliferating tendencies are working in the mind 
and to calm down, relax it, reduce it, minimize it. And if possible, ultimately to completely stop it and keep the mind silent. So there's a significant contribution from our side. It is necessary. So when we recognize uh, a certain amount of inner chatter is going on, too much thinking is going on. So there we have to interrupt that process. We have to stop that uh, tendency in the mind. We have to have a certain amount of uh, influence to that uh, ongoing automatic thinking, automatic thoughts, and to keep the mind relaxed, keep the mind uh, silent. So that is very, very essential in the vipassana process. Okay, Saman, we can start. Um, given the ego consciousness, the the ever prolific process of conceptualization in all its complex ramifications sets in. From one aspect, the notion I, with its concomitant na- notion of my and mine, develops towards craving, tanha. Weaved from another aspect, as inevitably and inextricably bound up with the notions of not I, of Tao and Thain. It is a form of measuring or value judgment, mana. Yet another aspect is the dogmatic adherence to the concept of an ego as a theoretical formulation. Thus, craving, conceit and weaves, tanha, mana, ditti, are but three aspects of the self-same ego consciousness and we find these alluded into the Madhupindika Sutta by the expressions Abhinanditabham, Abhivaditabham and Adjosetabham, respectively. It is this twin nature of the ego that one often comes across in the Pali canon as Mamatta, Asmimana and Sakkayaditi. Of similar significance are the three standpoints of which the wordlings is said to be each of his five aggregates when he thinks of them as this is mine, eta mama, this is am I, eso hamasmi, this is myself, eso mi atta. When atta. we atta, eso mi atta, yeah. Um, this right. is et, uh, eso mi atta. When we take into account the fact that the process of sense perception as given in the Madhupindika Sutta comprehends the five aggregates, the parallelism becomes all the more obvious. Things in Buddhist psychology, uh, Buddhist psychology, a difference of aspects is a difference in things. The three terms, craving, conceit and weaves, are usually distinguished between Yet, as they arise from the self-same metrics of the superimposed ego, they are not to be considered mutually exclusive. Now the prolificity prolificity in concepts suggested by the term papancha manifests itself through the above three main channels, so much so that the term has been traditionally associated with them. In the Mahanidesa, page 334, for instance, Tanha, Mana, and Ditti are defined in terms of Prapancha. Prapancha Yeva, Prapancha Sanska, Tanha, Prapancha Sanska, Ditti, Prapancha Sanska, Tanha, Prapancha Sanka, Ditti, Prapancha Sanka, Mana, Prapancha Sanka. Prapanchas themselves are papancha sankhas, to wit, tanha papancha sankha, ditti papancha sankha, mana papancha sankha. Buddha Gosha also often gives a similar definition. He observes, papancha sankha sankati, tayo papancha. Papancha sanya sankati. Papancha sanya sankati, tayo papancha, tanha papancho, mana papancho, Titi papancho ti. Prapancha, san, prapancha sanya sankha refer to the three papanchas, tanha papancha, mana papancha, and titi papancha. Tanha ditti manam etam abhi, abhi, uh, abhivachanam. 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 Tanha... Yeah, tanha ditti mananam etam adivachanam. Tanha ditti mananam etam adivachanam. This is a synonym 
for the tanha ditti and mana tanha ditti mana bhedasa prapancha sagati the range of prapancha comprising its three types tanha ditti and mana okay uh, one moment uh, saman now as janada thero is pointing out as as the um, commentary tradition starts growing up so various uh, commentaries so he is pointing out here uh, say majjhimnikaya attakatha majjhimnikaya commentary and degnikaya attakatha and then uh, mahanidesa uh, all these things are different comment commentarial works and uh, he is pointing out showing the references that basically later this uh, prapancha has simply recognized as tanha ditima so as pointing out as the last one or the just before the last one tanha ditti mananang etang adivachana so that means uh, prapancha has become a simply a synonym for tanha ditti manam but as as we saw coming from the madhupindika sutta and all this uh, to the short discussion we had so if we simply say prapancha is simply tanha ditti manam simply it's a synonym for tanha ditti mana so it's very much like we are narrowing down the meaning so various other aspects of the prapancha we we ignore and we we are simply kind of narrowing down or obstructing its meaning but anyway that is what has happened uh, as coming to certain commentarial explanations as nyananda thero is pointing out so it has become somewhat narrowed and uh, i mean even in the in the uh, commentator buddha gosa is pointing out three types of prapancha that is tanha prapancha mana prapancha and ditti prapancha so that that's all so it means nothing else is possible very much right but as katakurinda thero is pointing out so they are simply three results but they are not the only results and uh, so that is interesting part so he is trying to give more evidence and uh, finding out other dynamic aspects of the prapancha very interesting areas of the prapancha which is somewhat uh, ignored or uh, not recognized within the commentaries commentaries and on the other hand uh, there is a interesting point highlighted here mamatt asmi mana and sakkaya ditti so as i pointed uh, asmi mana so the conceit i am the very root uh cause of prapancha that we'll see in the future and again uh, very much like the center of whole thinking center of whole uh, languages grammar etc and on the other hand uh, sakkaya ditti now the when i is there so there is a kind of a relationship how uh, not i comes to the picture i and not i and uh, sometimes there are certain things external so is this external thing entirely myself or is this external thing belongs to me or is uh ex- uh external thing resides in me or i am inside the external thing so basically this uh, with respect to five aggregates so that is how the sakkaya ditti is uh, explained so there are 20 possibilities of sakkaya ditti uh, explained in the suttas where the first one is the aggregate equalized to the self so that means aggregate is myself so for example if you consider the body you have form so immediately i would say okay this is i am simply this body is myself and uh, if you see a picture that is how we recognize so this is i am so someone is asking you to uh, take a picture and send it to them and say they are trying to paste it somewhere and maybe publish in the newspaper now you want to show there here you can see i am there so simply we recognize the body the form our figure as myself so that is the first level one possibility how we how the sakkaya ditti can happen and on the other hand uh, we can say so this body belongs to me so that kind of a possession such relationship 
So I am someone, but I, I am having the body. So this body belongs to me. So that is another relationship, how Sakaiditi can happen. And the third one, third possibility is mentioned like uh, inside me. So self is something large. Inside this large self, the the aggregate remains or the body is inside me. So self is some, someone too large. In this large self, that's a portion, that's a little part, what we call the form. What we call in the Attaniva Rupa. So if we consider with respect to the form aggregate, Attaniva Rupa. So that means inside the self, there is Rupa. There is this, there is a form. And on the other hand, the opposite, where inside the form, there is little self. It's very much like the essence. So body is something external, something physical, something large. And inside that body, there is a very essence that is the self. So that's the fourth possibility. So according to the Dhamma, so likewise we can come up with all these different possibilities to all the aggregates. Say the first aggregate, as I just mentioned, is to the form aggregate, then the feeling aggregate. So immediately we simply say, okay, feeling is myself. I am the feeling, I am the I am the pressure. I am, the, I am the suffering. So that is how we define. Rather than telling, okay, I am the suffering, and we simply say, I am suffering. So even too close, I am suffering, I am happy. So that means at that moment, this happiness is I am. When you are sick, so I am sick. When you are going to kind of a suffering, okay, I am worrying, I am worried, I am suffering. So that pain <clears throat> immediately we recognize as myself. So we identify. And on the other hand, we can simply say, I belong this happiness. I belong this suffering. I belong this uh, uh, pain. So this is my pain. This is my suffering. This is my karma. So that's, that's how we, we have a certain, certain amount of relationship. So we, we say, okay, this belongs to me. Suffering is my, my suffering. Happiness is my happiness. That relationship. The third one is where I am someone, but this uh, feeling is part of myself. I have the capacity to feel. So I am uh, something big. So inside that, the feeling exists. On the other hand, we can say, so feeling is more prominent one. Inside the feeling, there is I. There is someone who is feeling. So likewise, with respect to five aggregates, these four possibilities Buddha is explaining. So ultimately it becomes 20 possibilities of generating Sakkaditi, 20 possibilities of feeling Sakkaditi. So you can see they are in a way very subtle how these recognitions, how these egocentric thinking and when we have ego and the non-ego, the outside, the self, when, when we have that duality, the distinguish, distinguishment, then actually all these complications are possible. We get into too much thinking. We are in a kind of a very complicated situation. We think too much. We are in a, we are in a doubt sometimes. We are in a perplexity because it's very difficult to understand. So here I am, there you are. And uh, so here myself and there yourself. So we come up with so many very subtle differences, uh, languages, and we add so many grammatical rules, so many complications. So as a result of all these uh, comparisons, and the craving also promotes that. So I and I want, I want that. And on the other hand, when... Uh, the the ditti comes, okay, I am that. So I become that. So you can see the very subtle how the mind go and adhere to something, then I'm, I'm simply saying, okay, I am that. So I have become that. Totally I am that. So likewise, so these are very interesting areas actually. Immediately we can't understand all the complex possibilities, but slowly, slowly as we recognize our own mind, 
how the mind is reacting, how the mind is recognizing, how the mind is identifying all these different aggregates, sometimes with, the, with respect to the body, sometimes with respect to feelings, sometimes with, re- with respect to signs, marks and uh, perceptions. And sometimes with respect to our own creativity, our own skills, our own volition, volitional activities. And sometimes our sense experience, sense cognition through the eye when we are recognizing a form. Okay, I am the one seeing. I see or I hear or I smell, I taste, I cognize, I I uh, contact go through a feeling. So likewise, so when sense operations, sense faculties are in operation, so they are also we attribute to self. I am the one feeling. I am the one seeing. I am the one hearing. I am the one recognizing. I am the one smelling, tasting. So you can see the I plays a pivotal role in this whole situation. So that's why uh, Asmi Mana has become the center of this uh, Prapancha. Okay, I think uh, that is enough for today. Maybe uh, we can... Uh, uh, yeah, there are some more to discuss. Uh, someone, I think we can uh, start that part next time. Yeah, Bante. If we go too much, then it would be more difficult since these are somewhat uh, very subtle points. Yes. So now we can open the session for questions. We have five questions today. Uh, before we start the q and I will just like to make an announcement. This is uh, regarding the session time. As those of you in Australia know, we change uh, our clocks to start daylight saving time from today, this morning. So we will be changing the start of the program to 7 p.m. from next week. Just want to uh, make that announcement. So we move on to the questions. Uh, question: uh, We have five questions, and they are all on the Dhamma sermon. Uh, we start with the first question. Question one of five. Uh, dear Bante, is it possible to simply understand the complex workings and the final outcome of Prapancha as Sakkaya Ditti with Metta? That's the end of the question. Yeah, very interesting question. So Sakkaya Ditti is, uh, as you can see, very, very strong reason uh, to prepare Prapancha or to generate Prapancha. But interesting enough, Sakkaya Ditti, even more uh, subtle reason is there. So that is called the As- Asmimana. Asmimana is m- even more subtler than Sakkaya Ditti. So you know that uh, typically we simply say when someone attains stream entry, Sotapanna, so he abandons Sakkaya Ditti. But still Papanchas are possible. Uh, if we simply say the uh, Papancha is a product of Sakkaya Ditti, so then when one becomes a Sotapanna, there can't be any form of Papancha afterwards. But unfortunately, still the Papancha is possible because the Papancha is even subtler than that. So the reason is even subtler than that. So that is why it is taken to the Asmi Mana level. So Asmi Mana is only eradicated or uprooted only when one becomes an Arahant. It's a very subtle Mana, the conceit, comparison, uh, I-based comparison, I, the simple center, I. So that is the root cause. And even when one becomes Zotapanna, Sakadagami, Anagami, still this notion I am is there. The conceit I am is there. So the Papancha is still possible. So there's actually a question on that. It says, Bhante, if Asmimana is one of the root causes of Prapancha, does that mean only an Arahat can completely eradicate Prapancha? Exactly. Exactly. So that's why, so that uh, it's a very, very deep area. So only Buddhas, Arahans are said to be completely free from Prapancha. <laughs> so you have to wait till you become an Arahant. <laughs> So do uh, that, you are free to have a puncher anyway. <laughs> uh, question number three of five. 
Uh, dear Bhante, recently we came across Mola Pariyaya Sutta, which highlights that the root of all things linked to a normal person can be explained by the interoperation of Tanna Mana Ditti. Last time Bhante mapped this to Prapanya Sanna Sanka, Sanka Samudhe Samacharana, but I could not understand it properly. If time permits, hope Bhante can explain how Mola Pariyaya Tanna Mana Ditti links to Prapancha philosophy in a simple manner. Much merits for your valuable service and explaining of this deep down. With Metta, that's the end of the question. Uh, maybe, uh, Chamila, then I will try to... Could you write that question to me and send, please? Uh, so that... Or simply forward that question to me in an email so that mm-hmm. I'll I'll uh, look in that area with respect to the Mula Pariyaya Sutta, how we can connect and uh, simply present maybe next time. Okay, ma'am. I will do it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, question number four or five. Um, dear Venerable Sir, I try to watch the mind as much as possible as a habit during day-to-day activities, apart from the regular sitting and walking practice. Most of the time, I categorize various thoughts and watch how they come and go and behave. Based on your excellent explanations of Prapancha and how they operate, now I have a desire to apply this understanding to the practice, going a bit deep, and to observe how thoughts are converted into prapancha during day-to-day activities when we are not guarding the mind. Much more is for your guidance how this understanding can be applied in practice with metta. That's the end of the question. Yeah, that is very good. So that is the purpose of this whole session. So to understand all these complications, how our mind uh, is tend to do all these diversification, unnecessary multiplications. You know, uh, typically there's a saying in Singhala, Eka hata karma. So when, when we have a simple thing, so we multiply that. Completely unnecessary. So how our mind tends to do that. And uh, so when we understand we are doing it, so then we become ashamed of it. We understand it's useless thing. So I am the one prepared the problem. I am the one aggravated the situation. Uh, situation is a very simple thing. Incident may be a simple incident. But I diversified that. I multiplied that. I uh, perceived that in a more intensified manner. So that is completely unnecessary. So, so understanding that uh, proliferation, proliferating tendency in the mind is very, very important. So by understanding that slowly, slowly, we can overcome that, keep the mind more in a simple, simplified manner so that the sankharas or preparations become less and less. Question number five of five. Uh, are each of the five aggregates, including Rupa, a manifestation in the mind, arising and passing? Secondly, what is Nama Rupa, please? Is this the same as the five aggregates? That's the end of the question. Yeah, as I mentioned, I think in the previous occasion also, I am going through a severe rain here, so please uh, hope you can still hear me. Uh, basically, uh, five aggregates, as you know, the form aggregate, feelings, perceptions, samkhara, the formations and the consciousness. And among these five aggregates, four are mental, one is physical. The physical aggregate is what we call as the, uh, the form aggregate. So the physical form aggregate is the rupa. The other mental four aggregates are the feeling, perceptions, uh, formations, and the consciousness. <clears throat> now, those four the, are sometimes called as the arupa or sometimes called as the nama. That's actually a later di- uh, categorization. So don't confuse that with name and form, which is available in the suttas. Nama rupa. And this categorization is entirely different. So in Avijja Pachya, Sankhara, Sankhara Pachya, Vinyana, Vinyana Pachya, Nama Rupam. So they are the Nama Rupa is completely different thing. They are not the uh, four aggregates we are talking, the mental parts that we are talking. In the uh, name and form, the Nama Rupa, Vinyana Pachya, Nama Rupam, Nama Rupa Pachya, Vinyana. So they are the name and form is more subtle. So that they are name the Dharma part consists of five five constituent parts, Vedana, Sanya, Ketana, Pasta, Manasikara. 
Vedana the feeling, Sanya the perceptions, Chetana the volition, Passa the contact, Manasikara is the intention, or rather the uh, we can say the attention. So they are very much like the very uh, subtle constituents of the mentality. And the form indicated there, Nama Rupa, the Rupa part, form indicated there is simply the perception of the uh, form. Perception of the form. That means the Rupa Sanya. So the Rupa Sanya is the very much like a very subtle uh, indication of the physical form aggregate and extract from that physical form aggregate. And the name part, Vedana Sanya, Chetana, Pasapanikara, are the very subtle extract coming from the name aggregate or the what we call the mental aggregates. So they are, we can say, the name and form, which is what operating within the mind in a very subtle way, interacting with the consciousness. So these are very subtle areas that uh, probably we can discuss maybe later. And probably you can uh, uh, go through last Saturday uh, clarity of mind program I have conducted with uh, Chalika in the uh, you know that New Jersey uh, Dhamma group. So there we have discussed certain aspects of the name and form. Probably you can listen to that part as well. Uh, the, the, that's the end of the written questions, Pante. Uh, we have about 10 minutes. Uh, we can close the program or uh, Pante is okay if we Open it up for if yes, somebody's actually raising their hand. Is it okay or? Yeah, okay, I think. But anyway, you have to somehow bear the noise coming because of the rain. It's okay. Uh, so I think uh, <coughs> Hiranti has uh, raised her hand. Thank you. Um, you mentioned how one should uh, practice uh, this proliferation in day-to-day -day life in one of the questions asked. So when you have, when a thought comes to you, to your mind, can you hear me, Bante? Can you hear me? Yes, yes, I can hear you. So when a thought comes to your mind, uh, it quickly starts proliferating. I mean, going into, oh, I'm going to tell her this, tell this, and like that, you start building a story. So when you realize it at the beginning, before you do that, is where you should stop, or has it gone too far? Uh, are you with me? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Basically, that depends on your mindfulness. So the more yes. you are mindful, more you are mindful, you can quickly trace the thought. But if your mindfulness is not good enough, then it has gone to very far, then only you may understand, oh my goodness, I was thinking unnecessarily, I was thinking long time, and not no point of this thinking. So you have gone too far. But if your mindfulness is very sharp, so the very first thought, second thought, third, third thought, at that level you can recognize, okay, there's a thinking going on, thinking has just started. It depends on your clarity of the mind. Ability to stop it. Uh, not really stopping it, rather the tracing it, the recognizing part. So your awareness, the mindfulness. The more you are mindful, quicker you can recognize. Yeah. I mean, from the first or second thought, when it comes, oh, I am going to discuss this or something like that, then right. at that point you just stop oh no need just put a full stop that that is the way to carry on yes 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 so the thing is so probably assume that you have started you you notice that only at the 10th 10th thought okay you stop there maybe yes. as your mindfulness is growing maybe later time you may recognize it that the seventh thought you stop there and maybe another mm -hmm. time you recognize it on the fifth thought you stop there and maybe, as you said, you may be recognizing at the third thought, maybe you stop there. So likewise, depending on the, you know, the, the sharpness of the mindfulness, you may be able to recognize at its early stage. Then it is more easier yeah. for you to stop the papancha. Yes, as you progress, you become more and more 
uh, speedier yeah. and quicker exactly. in exactly. Uh, detecting exactly. it, isn't it? Exactly. Uh, yes, yes, yes. So that is yes, the yes. way to carry on rather Correct. than, and also being mindful of what to talk, what not to talk will also help, isn't it? Like, uh, what happens is when you have something to tell somebody or to discuss something or an incident happen, then if only if you think it's unnecessary, it, the consequences of it by talking, you are just wasting that person's um, time as well as that person's uh, being come to her and all that and also protecting myself. So that way, just forget it. And you see, I think the more experience you get in this task, you may be able to stop it quicker and quicker and get better at it. Correct, Bhante? Exactly, exactly. So that's why actually in the future we'll talk what are the uh, strategies with the talking to overcome the punch. So that is the important part. So what are the possibilities available? What are the solutions, strategies? is available to overcome Papanta is uh, one area that we need to discuss. So as you said, uh, when we know the danger of the Papanta, what are the Adi in our, the disadvantages, disadvantages from me, disadvantages to another person of this ongoing proliferation, then we may be tend to stop that rather than continue in that because we understand it is useless, it is harmful. In that sense, we can stop it because we know the Adi in our, we know the Consequences. Yeah. Thank you, Bhante. Terwan Sarnai. Yeah. Terwan Sarnai. Thank you for your question. Um, we have, uh, is, is there anyone else who would like to ask a question? We have about five more minutes. I think uh, no one has. Uh, indicated. So maybe we will stop. Uh, we can close the program now. Uh, to end the program, first I'd like to thank Bhante for his valuable time with the sh- uh, schedule at the monastery. For everyone uh, who's supporting this program, both seen and unseen, and for the participants today for joining for the practice, for asking the questions. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Teruan Sarnay. Yeah, Teruan Sarnay. Sadhu, sadhu. Uh, again, I would just like to remind that from next uh, week, we are starting the program at 7 p.m. Australia Daylight Saving Time. So uh, we will uh, indicate in the email that goes out uh, what the time uh, is in Sri Lanka. And uh, we will uh, continue the program at that time, probably until uh, April when we change back again. 